ओके Good afternoon and welcome to today's session. Aha, ask him anything with with Mr. Vishal Shah. I am Prasanna, co-host of the event today. It's a unique webinar concept, specially designed for enterprise owners and senior IT professionals. Today's session is focused on saving the cost every enterprise spends on Microsoft license, email systems, and cloud backup. Let me introduce today's presenter, Mr. Vishal Shah. CEO and co-founder of Sinosoft Technologies. He has over 18 years of experience and expertise of IT industry. He is known as the seasoned technology stalwart and inventor of specific patented technologies, a writer, a serial entrepreneur, an investor, and importantly, a go-to guy for MSMEs. In this AHA webinar, you will have insights on MS licensing cost, email service cost, cloud backup cost, and you can ask the questions you want to. Um, Vishal, sir, can you please take it ahead from here? Yeah, good afternoon, all. Uh, thank you, Prasanna, for uh, a generous uh, introduction as always. Yeah, so we are meeting again on the same topic. You know, we did this AHA, Ask Him Anything uh, session in August. And uh, we had touched the similar uh, topics like how we can reduce cost on Microsoft licensing, how we can save money on uh, our email subscriptions, or how can we uh, save up on our uh, cloud uh, backup expenses. So today we are going to continue uh, the same topic. And uh, um, basically this AHA is not a predetermined uh, webinar. So this was uh, very much dependent on uh, your own questions. So those who have registered, uh, when they registered, they had given uh, certain questions they wanted specifically to be answered. So we studied all those uh, questions pertaining to licensing cost, subscription, email subscription cost, cloud backup service cost. And we compiled all those questions and then we uh, created the content for this particular webinar so that it can answer all the questions uh, asked by the 
people who have registered for this uh, webinar and there is a very good knowledge sharing uh, um, opportunity for everyone. So this is how we have designed, though it is ask him anything. Yes, you have asked uh, a lot of questions. We have compiled them. So we are not going to uh, answer the questions on one-to-one -one basis, but you will always uh, feel that whatever question you have asked is answered in the course of this particular uh, presentation. So let me um, give you an idea how we have planned it. So I'm going to uh, present uh, every licensing or subscription or cloud backup service uh, usage. Um, in a way, you can connect with your organization. And after that, we'll understand if we want to save upon this cost, what are the technical methods or what are the alternatives? Then we will evaluate those technical methods and uh, alternatives. And uh, I will also demonstrate uh, during this particular presentation. And uh, it will uh, give you more confidence that you can legitimately save these costs without uh, doing anything wrong. And uh, you can increase the ROI um, of your IT investment. So we will start with Microsoft licensing part. And uh, I will uh, present my screen now. Uh, so first of all, let us understand how Microsoft touches us, you know, in our operations of our enterprise, you know, where we are using Microsoft licenses. And once we understand where are we using Microsoft licenses, we will have a good uh, content to discuss upon how we can save this license cost. And then we will see how it is. We will follow the similar uh, uh, method for emails also. We will see what are the emails uh, services we normally use, what is its cost, and then how we can save that cost. Similarly, we will follow the same method for the cloud. So let us start with Microsoft uh, licensing part. So I am just turning off my video and uh, uh, presenting my screen. Give me a moment. Yeah, so let us first understand uh, what are the common cases of Microsoft license utilization where an enterprise is supposed to invest in Microsoft licenses. So one very common deployment of Microsoft license is Microsoft Windows 2019 server. Why we want to deploy on that? Uh, why would why why we want to deploy windows server because we want enterprise policies we want active directory and domain controls we want a file server in which we can share the folders and we can give rights to the users according to their job function we might want remote desktop service for work from home users and we want we might be using certain applications which require windows 2019 server and uh, we have to host those applications, run those software in Windows 2019 server environment. So that requires a hardware to be procured to install Windows 2019 server. You might require a storage hardware, which will be uh, used for storing the data of the file server. We require a Windows 2019 server license we require client access license. This is how these licensing policies work. So uh, of course, number of devices, number of users we create, there are specific licenses required. And in case we are using Microsoft 2019 servers, terminal services, we might require RDP client or remote desktop clients. In case we are using some application which requires Microsoft SQL server to be used, in that case, we have to buy SQL server license. We have to either buy device scale client access license for SQL server, or in case we have large number of users, we might opt for a processor CAL, which is processor, we call it PROC license popularly. So uh, sometimes we buy this kind of licenses also because it is required. Most of our users are conversant with Windows operating system. Most of our software work on Windows. So we require Windows operating system. And most of the times uh, as an enterprise, we are recommended that we should take pro version of Windows 10 
operating system. Now it is Windows 11, it is already launched, but we will require to buy that license in order to connect in case we have Windows 2019 server in order to connect to the domain. We have to uh, connect, uh, we have to provide Windows environment, we have to install software clients like Tally, ERP, SAP, which requires Windows 10 Pro mostly. So this is a licensing cost which we incur. And for the productivity purpose, for documentation purpose, for calculations, presentations, for checking our emails, uh, we are all uh, very familiar with Outlook. And sometimes we have some Excel or uh, Microsoft Access database for small, small applications. For that purpose, we require to buy MS Office licenses. So these are the avenues where we spend on licenses and we take Microsoft software and in order to run those Microsoft software, we also invest in hardware. So now let us see what kind of costs we normally incur. We will normally we incur for this kind of software. So if we look at uh, Windows 2019 server and client access license, we might be spending 4,000 rupees per user. I'm talking about a 25 user model network. If you have 100 users, you can multiply this cost and probably it would uh, be in the same line um, in which your hardware is sized or your license cost is uh, budgeted. So basically, if we take a 25 user model network, you know, it will require a good uh, entry level server, which would cost around uh, 80,000 lakh of rupees. Um, so I have considered as 4,000 rupees per user for the server hardware. So if you have large number of users, you would be uh, taking more powerful server and hence uh, you will be spending more, but we have converted it in variable for your assistance. Then Windows server license and client access license, if it is divided among those 25 users or 100 users, it would come to around 7,500 rupees per user. Then uh, we have to buy a storage hardware also because when we want to run a file server, we need to make sure that there is a storage, enough storage for all our AutoCAD files, our uh, 3D Studio files, documents, spreadsheets. So that storage hardware uh, costs approximately 6,000 rupees per uh, user. If it is for 25 users, that storage hardware would cost approximately one lakh, one and a half lakhs of rupees. Then we have to buy Windows 10 Pro on all the laptops, desktops, and that costs approximately 14,000 rupees. Recently, Windows 11 is launched, so you can consider Windows 11 in the same price. So that works out to be this entire software environment we create by investing server hardware, by investing in domain controller, storage hardware, by investing in um, Windows 10 Pro licenses. Uh, we, we, we spend approximately um, 31,500 mostly, we spend approximately 31,500 rupees, which is, I'm just rounding it here for your convenience. Now, in case we want to use our Windows environment for remote access, we have a large number of work from home users or um, we have uh, remote users then probably we might have to invest in another server, which is terminal server, which might be costing approximately 7,000 rupees per user because it has to be powerful because most of the users would be logging in and using a lot of applications on that. And then terminal client access license is also required, which would cost around 6,500 rupees per user. So that cost would be approximately 16,500 rupees per user. And then in case we want to secure our remote access, we would like to have VPN, VPN licenses and VPN hardware. For that purpose, we might go for a VPN hardware in terms of uh, a good router or a good firewall. And then we take VPN clients uh, on SSL or on um, any other secured protocol. And that would cost approximately 3,000 rupees per user. These are all one-time costs, 3,000 rupees per user. In case we are using Microsoft.NET framework or a client server application which requires a SQL server, then we will require to have one hardware for SQL server and SQL server software will have to be installed and that would cost approximately 6,000 rupees per user. A good SQL server for a, uh, uh, a 25 user application uh, would be at least one and a half lakh rupees hardware and software both together, software SQL server 
standard software and the client access license would be approximately 10000 rupees per user so that would be approximately 17000 rupees per user in case we are using microsoft kind of applications and apart from that uh, if we want to give word excel powerpoint kind of facility to our user outlook kind of facility to our user we might in case we want to buy microsoft office license uh, one time cost then it would be 30000 rupees per user or it could be 7000 rupees per user per year it is microsoft o365 kind of license so this is what in case we depend on uh, this kind of it infrastructure we are almost spending 31500 plus 16500 that would be approximately 48000 rupees then 3000 more 51000 then 17000 more in case applications are there uh, that would be approximately um, 78,000 rupees. And if we buy Microsoft Office 30,000, we are investing 30 more thousand rupees. So probably in servers, in server software and in client access licenses, we spend approximately uh, uh, maximum up to one lakh rupees per user and uh, minimum up to 31,000 rupees per user. So this is our licensing cost, uh, which we are supposed to bear and which is supposed to be there in our IT infrastructure investment. So now let me show you how we can save this cost very well. So uh, I will just clear all these circles and I will move to the next slide. And before that, I request Prasanna uh, to launch a poll. I would like to know, uh, you know, the participants' profiles. You know, what are the what is the profile of all the participants in terms of the stakeholders? And then uh, we will also uh, have another poll on which I would like to know about your feedback on this particular slide, which is visible on the screen. Yeah, so uh, the poll results are out. Uh, we have 21% uh, uh, 20, of the attendees as work from home users. We have 54% of the attendees as a owner or custodian of enterprise data. We have 25% of the people as uh, uh, IT professionals. Okay, so I think uh, this particular attendees are absolutely relevant profile for this kind of discussion. Now, uh, let me understand what do you think about this particular slide. Uh, Prasanna, can we launch another poll, please? While answering this poll, you can see this particular uh, screen and uh, you can take your judgment. I think Prasanna, uh, the choices are not visible properly. It's okay, no problem. But choice three and four should have been removed. You know, there is only yes and no in this question. Yeah, so 91% uh, of the people believe that uh, software license cost is significantly higher than the hardware cost. Yes, I agree. 
uh, I agree. Uh, I, I we just uh, we just bought a laptop for my son for his online studies, and I found that his laptop was thirty five thousand rupees, and the software we installed on his laptop, which was very consumer oriented software, that cost approximately sixty thousand rupees, including Microsoft, including Windows Server, so not Windows Server, uh, Windows ten or eleven. Yes, uh, and uh, saving on the software licensing cost can enhance ROI of IT spending. 86% of the people um, agree with that. Okay, so now we will understand how uh, we are able to, uh, how we are able to uh, save this cost in a very legitimate way and without compromising with the user friendliness or the convenience of the users. So let me move to the next slide. So first of all, we will see this particular part. And then we will see this part. So in case you are a small organization of 10 user, 15 user, 25 user, 50 user, many a times uh, people advise that you need to buy a server to host your applications, ERP application or whatever. And because you are buying server, you need to buy SQL server also to run. See, uh, I disagree with this kind of advice and I have um, counseled hundreds of SME owners that they don't need all this and they can save huge cost and they can save money for their business development. I'll explain how. See, when we talk about server, when server is required, that means you require a robust hardware, which is having good processing power, good RAM, and it can work 24 by seven. So server is a robust hardware. That does not mean that when you have server hardware, you have to install server operating system on that. So I always recommend that take the processing power and RAM as much as your application requires or as much as your application vendor wants. But if it is a small size network or uh, concurrently small number of users up to 50 or 60 or 100 are going to access the application, you can take a good quality server hardware. You can install virtualization software on that you can install Windows 10 or Windows 11 software on that. And that's it. Once you have Windows desktop application on a server hardware, server hardware is sufficient to run your applications. Desktop application does not matter because Windows applications run on .NET framework and .NET framework runs on both server operating system as well as desktop operating system. So your application would run without any problems. The biggest advantage is because you are using desktop operating system, you are not liable to buy SQL server standard license. You can use SQL Express license. SQL Express license is a very powerful database software and it can support more than 10 GB of the data and you can very well save huge costs. So instead of 17,000 rupees per user, you can uh, save at least 15,000 rupees. You can uh, do all these things in just 2,000 rupees per user kind of cost in terms of server hardware and Windows 10 operating system. In case you have larger database than 10 GB, and if it is mostly ERP application, you can ask your application vendor to separate the databases year wise. Just like in tally, we first decide for which date to which date we want to use tally. Similarly, when you select last year, it will load database of the last year. When you select this year, it will load the database of this year. So that instead of keeping all the data in one database and facing the limitation of um, a certain number of GBs, you can have number of databases per year and you can increase that limit of 
number of GBs and very well survive um, and we can save the cost. On the productivity front, uh, you can seriously evaluate WPS Office and Thunderbird. You know, uh, Thunderbird is a very good application. It is better than Microsoft Outlook on certain uh, features and Thunderbird is free of cost. You may not require to use uh, Microsoft Outlook uh, because Thunderbird can be sufficient. You may not require to use Word, Excel, PowerPoint for all your users. You can check WPS Office. We are also going to show you WPS Office screen also. Uh, and I will challenge if you can make out the difference between that. So user does not have to go through any learning curve when they use WPS Office kind of um, software. Now coming to this part, how we can eliminate Active Directory, Domain Controller and Enterprise Policy. We want Enterprise Policy. We want File Server. We want folders user-wise rights, folder permissions, but how we can avoid using Active Directory, how we can avoid domain controller. So as soon as we avoid domain controller, as soon as we avoid Active Directory, we avoid the investment in the server also. So this is something which can save huge cost uh, for the purpose of Active Directory or for the purpose of domain controller or for the purpose of applying enterprise policies and for sharing the data or setting a folder permission, you really do not require to invest in a server hardware. You do not require to invest in a domain controller and uh, um, Windows license and Windows server license and client access license. Uh, you can evaluate device hardening technologies available. Our product Blackbox is one of them. So I'm going to show you our product, but it is not that Blackbox is the only one available. There are many device hardening products available and there are many storage hardware also available in the market. You can combine both and you can have uh, good avoidance of Active Directory, Domain Controller, Enterprise Policies and Data Sharing. And uh, the biggest uh, advantage you will also have is this. You know, when you are not using Microsoft domain, you do not require to use Windows 10 Pro. You can very well buy a computer system which is loaded with, uh, um, with Windows uh, 10 single language or home. And uh, you don't need Windows 10 Pro because you are not using domain controller. So you don't have to take that system in the domain. So without taking the system in the domain, you keep your environment as work group environment and still benefit uh, uh, for all the enterprise policies, data sharing, folder permission without any problems. And that can be very easily achieved uh, by device hardening and storage hardware kind of combination. Blackbox is a combination of device hardening and storage. So we, we, can, we, can, we can see this and we will see how it works. Similarly, we have a remote access requirement. Maybe in that case, you don't have to buy a kind of Windows server and then terminal server and then take RDP clients, CALs, and then allow users remote desktop from remote. You can see this access application anywhere from Blackbox. And there are many application virtualization software just like Blackbox, you know? So I'm not saying uh, or promoting Blackbox. I'm going to show Blackbox because it does this and it saves licensing costs. But you can always evaluate uh, other applications for remote access. And for that purpose, you can search Google application virtualization software. It could be so many uh, company software you can have. And by virtualizing your application, you can have remote access and you can avoid terminal server license, RDP KL license, and very powerful server hardware license, uh, server hardware cost also. So now uh, what we will do is, uh, we will connect to something which in which I will demonstrate how ac without Active Directory, we can define the policy. We'll see uh, it on the user's desktop. And we'll also see this application virtualization software. Along with that, we will see the screens of WPS Office and Thunderbird also. So I have, uh, uh, you know, uh, with me, uh, our technical team also who will help us. So can we just go to some sort of black box console in which we can show them uh, the application, uh, um, how, how we can define user-wise uh, policy for the application. Can you please do that?
so now uh, i am showing you that without uh, using active directory or domain controller or windows server or windows server license and client access license how you can define the policy and how those policies would work so normally black box is deployed uh, as an agent on the client machines and there is a console server side console on the black box and this particular server side console can define the policies so as soon as the agent is installed on the windows computer of the user uh, all those computers are listed over here so we'll take example of this account executive user now we want to define lot of policies on that particular user so can you just uh, show the policy so first of all we will decide uh, whether this account executive user can work on which number of computers you might have 25 computers and you want that out of those 25 only on five computers this account executive user should be able to work then you can define number of computers here on which account executive user can work so on one computer you can allow multiple users and on uh, for one user you can allow multiple computers or you can allow one to one computer also so this is the first uh, uh, thing we check mark uh, which can be done by active directory and this can be done by the um, black box also then uh, we will define which number of folders will be shared by the user you know which number of folders will be shared by the user so here uh, we have number of folders we can just add and we can add the folder and we can grant the access permission uh, so that uh, this particular user will have access to those uh, folders only and we'll see how access permission can also be given uh, then we will decide which particular applications can be used by the user so here you see that all these uh, applications are loaded on his computer are listed over here and we can allow which application can be loaded so this is all we do normally by a domain controller and active directory we define which user which work on which folder on which computer which applications he will work on then we can also set up the vpn from the same interface so in case we want this user to access it from vpn we can set up the vpn also so here um, uh, traditionally you have active directory you have domain controller you have a router vpn router you have a vpn client all these license cost can be very easily eliminated if uh, you are using device hardening technology by black box or by any other provider here you can uh, make sure that black box you, certain user can access certain computers he can access certain applications he can access certain um, folders and he can access vpn uh, with a preset credentials and then we will see how you can define the permissions can we go to access controller login please so once all these things are done uh, we can go to access controller login and then we can define folder wise permission very user friendly way you know right click on the folder and then um, whatever permission we want to set up for that you don't need windows server and all that so now this will load entire universe of the folder just show the list of the folders just right click on any of the folders and show the permissions so here we can uh, create the permissions just show how we create the permissions. so on this particular folder let's say we want certain number of users to be or certain number of group users should be we can select those users we can uh, give the read write permission inside read write permission we can detail it also so everything can be done so for this purpose you don't need to spend on active directory domain controller server hardware server license client access license and everything so this is something which is uh, very important and it can save significant licensing cost now uh, we will uh, log on to a user's computer and we will try to see how these uh, application how these policies are reflected 
So uh, can we log on to uh, account manager profile, please? So this particular is a laptop user and this particular user is loaded with black box agent. Can we just verify it? Yes, just like in Active Directory, we can define whether user will be part of admin group or not. Uh, here we have not kept this user in admin group. So you cannot do anything on this system. See this. Now let's see what is accessible to him uh, with his uh, um, folders. So you see there are two folders which we have given him the access uh, he has access to. And we have also allowed remote access to the enterprise storage and uh, it can be accessed by the VPN. So we can connect to the VPN. VPN. Just he doesn't need to know username, password, anything. Just connect it and it will be connected and it will automatically be connected with the enterprise central storage and all the folders will be loaded and that particular user can work on enterprise storage remotely or in office and he can very well exchange the data also. So this is how all the folders are loaded. If you remember in the console, we have uh, allowed all these folders to this user and user can work on this particular folder. So this particular device, uh, Windows computer laptop uh, is not uh, in the domain, is not part of the domain environment. It is a work group. It is loaded with black box agent, but you are getting all the policies enforced, which otherwise you would have got by enforcing a domain controller, active directory, making the policy and all that. So this is very easily uh, controlled. Now coming to that remote desktop part. Okay, uh, how will we access, give the access to the remote desktop applications? So let's say we will close this. So on this, you will see black box AAA shortcut. You see this. Now, uh, let's say uh, we want this user to access tally or for a matter of uh, a change any ERP. He just has to double click on this. He is already connected on VPN. Uh, he just has to double click on this. As soon as he double clicks on this, uh, tally and ERP would be virtualized on his laptop and he can very easily use it. And this is very fast. This is very secured because uh, this particular applications are not loaded on his laptop. They are just exchanging the keystroke and mouse clicks. So this is how uh, it works. So now Tally Prime is installed, loaded. This particular some ERP is also loaded. So uh, we can very easily work, user can very easily work on that. You don't really need to have terminal server, um, you know, terminal service license, remote desktop access license. You don't need to have all these things and you can very easily give remote access to your applications. Now, in case you don't want to use applications, for virtualizing uh, this kind of ERP or any client server application, you can also give access to all tally and ESSL in browser. So we can just connect to the browser. This is, this is the beauty of application virtualization. Go to browser, open black box AAA, log in as a user. And this entire application, this is a browser in full screen, okay? But it is a browser. It is browser in a full screen and you can very, easy, very easily see this. Now Tally is loaded in the browser and when you click it, it will be loaded in the browser. You don't need to install Tally. Um, somebody in the attendees uh, has asked the question that how you can virtualize Linux. Uh, whatever it is, Linux, iPhone, anything, you can use Tally in its browser without any problem. So uh, this is something which is uh, very important and uh, very cost effective. So in case you are evaluating, uh, uh, you know, terminal server license, RDP CAL license and all that, uh, search Google with application virtualization. It will give you good uh, solutions. Blackbox is one of them, of course. Yeah, can we close this, please? Now just show the uh, interface of WPS office, uh, how it looks to all. Yeah, can we open WPS office somewhere? And Thunderbolt also. So this is something like Thunderbird. 
where um, it looks like Outlook, it works like Outlook and it has many features. It has better uh, file system. Uh, it manages your uh, uh, contacts. It has its own calendar. You can give calendar request, everything. So this is Thunderbird and it is absolutely free. Just can we open uh, somewhere WPS office, please? Open writer or anything, yeah. Just new document here. So all the menus, everything are very well designed. You can have all the functions and the best part is even if you send this document, it will save in doc and docx. And in case you are sending it to um, Microsoft Office user, they will not have any issue. Can we just see the Excel file, please? With all the menu, uh, every feature, of course, it has some features which are not available, but most of the users don't use all the features and you can very well exchange it with MS Office user. Yeah, we can close this. So this was all about uh, the cost saving on Microsoft license, RDP, KL, and uh, um, I think I have made my points. So Prasanna, can you please launch the poll before I move to email part? Yeah, so 88% of the people believe that these ideas uh, are practical and useful. 13% uh, of the people disagree. Uh, you can always write me an email to understand your perspective. Now uh, we will move to the next part, uh, which is, uh, we'll move to the next part, which is email part. Let me just uh, remove this. So normally we use email uh, system um, and in the email system, there are five components. One is email host, where our emails are uh, hosted or our inbox is hosted, where we use space. Then SMTP relay, whenever we are sending an email, we relay that email to the third party. So there is an SMTP relay service. In the email service, uh, you get anti-spam. So uh, the server intelligently uh, identifies possible spams and moves it to spam folder. So this is also part of any Gmail, any email service. It is also antivirus service provided with the email. So whenever you are downloading any attachment, it is scanned by the antivirus before you download that. And there are some other services like calendar service, drive service. It depends on which kind of service provider. If you are uh, uh, taking service from a hardcore email service provider, then email host, SMTP relay, anti-spam and antivirus are the one. If you are taking service from O365 or G Suite, then other services are also inbuilt. 
and the cost of this email is around 1500 rupees to 3500 rupees per email id uh, per year uh, so that is the cost now let me uh, let me uh, you know uh, highlight something you know see in every enterprise there are two types of users of email system one type of user is kind of 10 to 6 users who come to the office check their emails Uh, reply their emails go home and they have least uh, concern about what is the email they will check the email next day at the most they might get some emails on their mobile phone nothing else so these are the we call them 10 to 6 type of users okay who require access on specific computer whatever is their desktop on which they require their email system they require basic very basic email system they require anti spam and anti virus Uh, and they do not require large mailbox because we normally download the emails in their outlook or thunderbird kind of client so they don't require online space in a very very large uh, uh, storage uh, or gbs okay so this is one kind of users and the other kind of users is anywhere 24 by 7 access users means kind of top management uh, uh, users who do not have specific working hours they require anywhere access they require very large inbox because they want to carry all their emails uh, uh, accessible you know from anywhere so they would like to keep it on the online mailbox they require other services also like calendar drive uh, and all that and they also require multiple device syncing they might be using laptop ipad mobile phone and they require same version of the emails in that year one deletes other uh, also should be deleted so they are kind of anywhere 24 by 7 access users so these are the two types of users and that is the key to saving your email subscription cost so if i tell you that let's say you are using g suite or o365 or netcore or logix you are spending this much of money which includes all these things but these users in office or 10 to 6 users only require specific very basic email system with anti virus and anti spam they don't need online access they don't need large mailbox they are happy with their uh, email client on the other hand you have other users who are going to use all the services provided in this 1500 or 3500 rupees email id so if you can differentiate between these two users and if you can provide um, you know strip the services to this 10 to 6 users and full services to 24 by 7 users there is a there is a potential of saving and that is what we are going to evaluate how you can save the cost on the email part so now we will see how we can save the cost and this can be achieved from any email distribution system it could be black box it could be anything so now we assume that your 10 to 6 type of users are 80% they are 80% in your network so let's say if you have 100 users 80 users are the people who are using 80% of your 80 or users who are using your uh, emails in a very basic mode and maybe 20 users require email access everywhere okay so if we have something which saves cost you know because you are not paying for the online account feature you are not paying for other services if you can save the cost you can very easily uh, make sure that uh, uh, your cost saving can be real so here traditionally if you buy all the services for all the users uh let's say if we take the average of uh, uh 2500 to 3500 so 120000 like to 280000 like rupees and for 20 users it is 1500 to 3500 so it is 30000 to 70000 rupees per year so the cost would be 150000 like rupees to 350000 like rupees per year in case you deploy some dns splitting technology which is i will explain what that technology is it can bring down this cost to just 32000 rupees instead of this 120000 like to 280000 like rupees and because this cost is brought down you need only 20% of the users uh, who should be having this kind of 
requirement at let's say average of 22 2500 rupees per user and 20 users then 82000 rupees would be the cost so that will bring down the cost from one and a half to three and a half lakhs of rupees to just 82000 rupees and we'll see how so here here is your email host maybe gmail netflix whatever and every email host has a concept called catch all accounts now this is your uh, this is your 24 by 7 user of this category and this is your lan user or in office user we call him 10 to 6 user of this particular category now this particular user will have a direct account on your gmail or o365 or netflix whatever it is not netcore whatever it is and you will these people will directly use the email system from this and you will pay full amount 2500 3500 1500 whatever per mailbox per year and these users will not directly connect to this instead they will connect to a software we, we call it dns splitter on premise or on data center that is a specific mail distribution server so this mail distribution server if you search on google you will have many mail distribution servers um, black box is one of them and you can have many so this catch-all account will be downloaded in this particular mail distribution server and this mail distribution server will distribute the mails user wise so let's say uh, user a b and c are part of the catch-all account uh, all the mails will be there in the catch-all account we are not worried because we don't want to give online access to abc and this abc are sitting here in the office uh, they will directly connect to this dns splitter this dns splitter service will download this abc email here and make mailbox of a b and c separately and distribute those mails in a b and c a will fetch mails of a b will fetch mails of b and c will fetch mails of c and this is how we can make sure that we don't need to pay all the money of your uh, email system um, for even the users who are 10 to 6 kind of user who do not need all these facilities and this is how you can very well save the cost so before we move to the cloud part i would request prasanna to launch the poll please Yeah, so um, 83 percent of the people agree that majority of the users are no freeze email system requirement kind of user and 83 percent of the people agree that uh, top management and senior management people require full fledged email system. Prasanna, can we launch another poll?
Yeah, Prasanna, is the poll running? Uh, no, sir. Uh, we have already uh, shown the results. Should I share the results again? No, no, it's already shared. I think I had a lag on my screen. Yeah, okay. so I think 85% of the uh, attendees uh, think that um, whatever solution or idea is suggested on saving the email system, uh, cost saving is worth exploring. Yeah, now we are moving to the last part of this presentation, which is about cost saving on the cloud. So we need to understand uh, it in um, you know detail. So let me explain that. So uh, when we talk about a cloud backup, you know, sometimes uh, we think that you know uh, Dropbox or Google Drive sound very very lucrative. So I need to caution everyone, you know, so let's say if it is 2,500 rupees uh, for 30 GB and we extend that for number of TBs, that cost is very low. Like Google's one terabyte account is just 13, 14,000 rupees, but it is for per user. It is not for uh, entire enterprise. So let's say if you want uh, uh, one terabyte storage for your one user, um, you can spend 13, 14,000 rupees per year, but you want two terabyte storage for all your users. Let's say you have 25 users or 50 users in your enterprise. It will be extremely expensive. So when we are talking about a consumer kind of cloud backup system, where I would like to back up my photographs or I would like to back up my personal stuff, I would think about this kind of consumer cloud storage options. But when we are talking about enterprise, we cannot afford, it is very expensive, though it sounds very low, but it is not. If you do it for 30 users, it costs huge and it costs recurring. So as per our estimate, if we use cloud backup system for next five years, um, you need to have a recurring uh, agent also and that would cost you approximately um, uh, three lakh seventy five thousand to five lakhs of rupees, and recurring cost of two terabyte would be two lakh seven thousand rupees. We have taken the basis as Amazon's rate; it is zero point zero twenty three USD per GB, which is the lowest uh, on the industry standard. So this is what uh, a typical organization with two terabyte of the storage would spend. You know, approximately five point eighty two lakhs to seven point seven lakhs. Instead of that, what we suggest is that uh, organization can go for um, per year per enterprise cost instead of per year per user cost. Most of the uh, solutions available are per user per year cost and that works out to be very expensive. So organization can take one entire pool of the space and then connect all the users through any data uploading agent, black box client is also a data uploading agent. And those data uploading agent are not recurring cost and they have nothing to do with what storage system is. And these agents can upload the data on this central cloud system, which could be two terabyte uh, or four terabyte, whatever. And as and when it is required, you buy more space. So normally, uh, for an enterprise which is not using very large or heavy files, 20 GB per user is a good estimate for cloud backup. And uh, for an enterprise which is uh, using AutoCAD kind of files for every user, 50 GB per user is a good estimate. And accordingly, you can find out what would be your total cloud storage space. Then you can connect to one aggregate pool of cloud storage space. You can buy other uh, data uploaders um, uh, licenses, which are a one-time cost, which can upload the data and it can give the uh, feedback or it can give the report also. So this works out to be more expensive and over a five years time, this works out to be almost 50% cheaper and more promising, more accurate. I will show how. When we use this kind of data uploading, uh, uh, uploader features kind of thing, you know, we 
you know, get very good reports. I'll show you. Um, I'll show you one report which is normally seen uh, uh, on black box, basically. Uh, so let me uh, show you that particular uh, report also. So when, and this kind of report is not possible in consumer kind of cloud storage, you know, it is not possible in consumer kind and you don't have any visibility whether your data is being backed up or not unless and until, uh, you know, you check every user. So here we will see a report. So let's say we have many laptops. So we can see there are 15 laptops successful, one laptop one com incomplete, one laptop no data. And so this is a kind of visibility we get, you know, on for an enterprise cloud backup, which is not possible in uh, a kind of, uh, you know, consumer kind of uh, backup. So if we see this particular, uh, let's say data, let's say we open this, We'll open one with error, one without error. So this is one without error. It is just completed before 19 minutes. Uh, the data sent was 1.12 KB because these uploaders can compress the data very well, which will not uh, have a lot of uh, you know uh, large data size also. And 4.3 GB is the total stored data. Similarly, let's see one of the one the one which is with the error. Let's see. So this is an error full report. It is saying uh, the last update was before 16 hours and uh, data uh, is right now in the final meta. Progress is 100% because it is in process. It is right now categorized in error. So this is something uh, where you can save cost by going for per user, by not going for per user per year kind of cloud backup service and by going for per enterprise per uh, year kind of uh, um, um, kind of uh, uh, um, model and uh, just buying the data uploaders on one-time cost. It will it will save a lot of cost. So I think we are done with our uh, um, ideas on various questions asked by you on uh, how to reduce uh, Microsoft licensing cost or email email subscription cost or cloud backup cost. So I will uh, now take up the questions. Uh, Prasanna, can you uh, run the remaining poll while I'm going through the questions? Yeah, so uh, if we see the result, um, one more thing I uh, missed out to tell you all of you that uh, per user per year kind of cloud backup models will give complete control to the user. User can change Google Drive setting, user can change uh, the login settings, destination folders, source folders for the backup, which is not healthy for an uh, accurate backup system. And with device hardening, above challenges can be overcome. 75% of the people agree to that. Uh, yes. Uh, Prasanna, any other poll remaining? You can launch it. By the time I ask, uh, I just start answering the questions. No, sir. All the polls have ended. Okay. So now uh, I'm taking the question by uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Rafiqul Islam. 
uh, what about customer who already invested in Windows and SQL platform? What about Linux and Oracle database? So the customer who has already invested in Windows and SQL platform, uh, when there is uh, an opportunity to upgrade the hardware, you know, they can um, uh, they can deliberate on the ideas which I have given by investing in uh, server hardware and by invest making sure that uh, uh, we have virtual server and on virtual server there is SQL. Uh, loaded uh, SQL Express edition loaded on the Windows 10. And what about Linux and Oracle database? See, Linux is free of cost. So it gives you very good uh, license saving by itself. And Oracle is a premium database. You have to pay for it if your application genuinely requires it. Uh, coming to Mr. Bhagwat Patel's uh, 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 question, cloud backup, what is the meaning of DHSS? Okay, sorry, I it's my bad. Uh, I did not explain. DHSS is device hardening software solution. Means uh, these are the, the ones uploaders I was talking about uh, where you can install that uploader and then that uploader will, um, um, you know, uh, map with certain folders on the laptop or on the server, and it will upload it to the enterprise cloud storage system. So DHSS is a software uploader, uh, you know, which can be applied for uh, uploading the data on the cloud. Yeah, another question is, can we use PowerPoint in WPS? Yes, very much. Uh, this particular uh, PowerPoint presentation, which I was showing was actually designed in WPS. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Ranju Pillai is asking, uh, can you explain in detail how DHSS cost works? Name some partners uh, for solution. See, DHSS cost is anywhere between uh, uh, 3000 rupees per user uh, perpetually, you know, and then you might want to subscribe to its upgrade and you might pay a petty amount every year. But then that is a perpetual license which you can install on your computers, which can upload the data to the cloud. And these kind of DHSS solutions can upload data on any cloud. Of course, Blackbox provides its own cloud solution. Uh, at the same time, you can couple this kind of DHSS solutions with uh, Amazon S3 or uh, Google Drive or Microsoft Azure kind of uh, storages. So uh, uh, yeah, we can always connect with you. Prasanna, can you please uh, 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 connect DHSS cost with uh, uh, Pillai? Uh, I mean, uh, we can go uh, yes, offline. Sir. Right. Yes, sir, I'll uh, do that. Yeah, um, um, yeah. Monisha Jasuba is asking why every two, three months change your cloud backup after upload my one TB data when you change server, why upload data gone? Uh, Monisha, when this would be uh, something, you know, very related to support, I would request we don't use this platform for discussing this. But yes, if, since you have asked this, why every two, three months change your cloud backup after uploading my 1TB data when you change the server, my data, up, my upload data gone. Uh, it should not be, we we have changed, uh, I mean, cloud backup of black box is changed only once in last five years. It is not every two or three months. Now we'll take this offline. Uh, then another question is from Mr. Rohit Mehrotra. Uh, what will happen when Thunderbird and WBS pre version is stopped? Uh, see, Mr. Rohit, uh, uh, these, uh, if you look at their licensing policy, Thunderbird is not intended to be charged, you know, uh, and of course, yes, if they stop, you know, you have to look for something else. But uh, these people have, uh, uh, you know, good commitment. And uh, I think Thunderbird we have been using since last 10 years, and it is not yet uh, being charged. And actually, uh, Thunderbird is an open source project. So I don't see that it would be, you know, a charged in near future. Uh, why people are paying cost for Microsoft licensing when free version of WPS or WPS online is available. I think it is a matter of information and perception. Uh, when uh, we uh, provide demonstration on this particular platform uh, without any wasted interest, I think people would, uh, uh, you know, uh, deliberate to, you know, try it and probably they will be satisfied. I think I, um, uh, Synersoft has uh, recommended this particular solution to almost 4,000 enterprises and made them adopt uh, WPS Office. So 4,000 enterprises into uh, maybe let's say uh, 50 users uh, average, 
means 2 lakh users and 2 lakh users into 30000 rupees is a huge cost saving probably uh, we have done you can always try uh, mr mehrotra can multiple users work on the same workbook uh, in wps uh, i am not very familiar with the nitty gritty of the workbook of uh, wps um uh, but it would be you know if microsoft is offering that i think in microsoft excel also i think in microsoft excel also uh, when it is being shared by two particular users i am not talking about office 365 which is absolutely recurring cost but when you have a perpetual license of microsoft office i think people cannot work simultaneously on the workbook uh, in wps office i think you need to explore i am not an expert of wps office actually but yes i can see that majority of the users can very well add up to it um shamali is asking can we migrate thunderbird uh, existing outlook data yes there are methodologies on the web uh, google you can very well do that there are converters also for the same so merotra uh, black box is work like nas yes uh, nas is one of the function of the black box so black box is nas plus dlp plus vpn plus firewall so black box is basically uh, multiple solutions uh, uh, you know integrated in a single hardware um, so merotra share the cost of black box prasanna can you please take up take a note of this yeah yes. so i think uh, yeah i think we are done uh, with this particular webinar we can take one more question uh, at the most and uh, after that i would request prasanna to conclude the session uh, by the time you are uh, you know thinking about your question let me tell you tomorrow we have a demonstration of the latest version of black box by bd shadas it is going to happen at 3 o'clock and today um, at 4:30 in our support seniors of support to united smes uh, we are organizing and sponsoring a training on email etiquettes in case you want to attend or even in case you want to refer your colleagues to attend uh, you can go to unitedsmes.in person if you can just help everyone with the typing it in the chat uh, and you can register on that particular event uh, for email etiquette uh, you can uh, also take part in that particular training it is complimentary Uh, uh by our support to smes mr merotra what will happen if black box is down work of all users will stop it is not so black box uh, has different models so black box has a model of uh, uh, breathe on breathe so if this is something which is uh, a matter of concern you can take breathe on breathe version so if one device goes down another device will be up and running Uh, but yes if you are dependent on one single device uh, yes if it goes down the work of all users will stop and you have to wait till it is up and running but the sensitivity to this problem will determine which model you should pur purchase single single device or twin device mr ambre is asking can you connect uh, me with your sales person prasanna can you please take a note of this yes mr yes, ambre sir. prasanna will help you uh and of course you can see complete demonstration of the black box tomorrow it is being done by bidisha uh share technical specification of black box prasanna uh, please take it up and i would request those who are interested in knowing more about black box can very well uh, connect tomorrow at 3 o'clock uh, we have demonstrations happening at all the month uh, at 3 pm um, on tuesdays and thursdays so tomorrow it is also going to be there Yeah, Prasanna, over to you. Thank you, sir, for such a knowledgeable session. Thank you, everyone, for attending the session. We appreciate you being here. Hope you have learned and enjoyed the presentation. Kindly fill the survey form, which you will get at the end of the session, to give us your valuable feedback. Thank you again on behalf of Sinosoft. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Prasanna, you need to share the details of email etiquettes. We have just uh, seen that in the chat. Yes, sir. I'm just sharing the registration link. Yeah, you can please answer the questions. Uh, I have some other meetings, so I'll just rush to it. I'll leave the webinar. Yeah, Rajendra. By the time Prasanna answers all the questions, don't end this uh, webinar, please. Okay, sure. uh i have shared the registration link for the webinar
that's going to be uh, starting in 15 minutes in the chat. Everyone can register from there and join the session. I have even added a registration link in the chat for everyone for tomorrow's session even. Mr. Kishore, it's, it's been sent to you in the chat. I think uh, it's all done, uh, Rajendra Bhai. We can end this session. <laughs>